Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Solid Experience uh, webinar. Today, we are showcasing SMAP3D. Now, SMAP3D is a partner of SOLIDWORKS and SO System that integrates a deeply uh, niche solution within SOLIDWORKS. Stay tuned with Michael. He's going to show you in depth the software and the solutions they're offering. But before that, let me take a few minutes to showcase uh, who a solid experience is and what do we do. And to understand solid experience, you need to know that it's a merger of two companies. It's Solid Experts and Mechanica Solutions. Now, both companies offered uh, the SOS system uh, solutions prior to this, and our owner had decided, you know, well, not, well, let's join them together and make each team beneficial to each other with the new 3D experience uh, that's been offered lately by the SO system. So the merger of Solid Experts and Mechanica solution is a solid experience. You know, it brings us a lot of offices together, the Montreal, uh, Quebec, as well as the Toronto offices that are Nashua offices, a lot of uh, certification and certified people within the SO community and the SOLIDWORKS community. Uh, more than 250 uh, technical certification, and a lot of uh, new customers as well as that were more in the niche market. Um, so uh, on that side, more than um, 3,800 uh, companies uh, using our services. Now, both of our companies, you know, we uh, offer uh, pretty much the same type of uh, service before, and for the training, obviously, Solid X experience is. Uh, this is a certified training center. Um, we have about uh, 30 to 35 different uh, training available for you. All of them can be accessed through our new online service, our web uh, training service, which uh, allows you to uh, connect with the uh, trainer uh, live and follow the, the uh, classroom uh, with your own uh, PDF version or a hard, hardcover book that we'll mail it to you. And uh, it's uh, it's working well. People are actually liking this uh, procedure. It's, it allows them to be more comfortable at home or in the office. And uh, you know, it, it's pretty much the same as it was in class, but in a more comfort, uh, comfortable environment. So uh, we also provide custom training, especially for solution like this one, which is a partner solution. Um, there's always a little bit more you need to know uh, from the partner itself. So we can provide that. The support team at the Solid Experience has grown quite a lot, and uh, obviously all our resources are certified. There's a few level of uh, support you can get. Obviously, when you call in, you know we'll redirect your call to the right person or the right team for your for your requests. Um, we have a toll-free number, a website, uh, a portal access to download uh, any uh, information you might need on support. All this through our uh, 1877 number. Now, integration, it's always the key factor because as you'll see, Michael is going to do a great presentation on his software and how great it works. But you know, the fact of the matter is how good a software is is only as good as the persons that know how to use it. So uh, sometimes integration is a, a good part of it because we offer a quick start or a no worry startup where we actually help customers to. Um, to boost their uh, level of, uh, of knowledge within the first few months or, or, or weeks by sending you know some consultants or people to help them coach on site while doing a project or a specific task. So this you know it's uh, really you know help you with the learning curve of a new software, a new solution. So this is a service we offer on a regular basis as well as optimization. Sometimes customers, you know, they need uh, to optimize their process because they've been using SOLIDWORKS for quite a few years, but, you know, the structure is, as, as a growth inside and um, they need more solution from us. So sometimes we come in and help them do an, an, an assess evaluation and see what solution can help them grow with their own company um, with the tools that we offer. So uh, this is a service we offer, it's optimization, and uh, you can always ask any one of us uh, that would like more information about it. Now, solution-wise, uh, this whole system is uh, really healthy. And, uh, you know, on the SOLIDWORKS side, obviously, this is what we're focused on today. 
Uh, we have the data management, which start up as a company structure where well, it helps you manage your SOLIDWORKS data, but also your any type of data. I mean, and it's all managed in the uh, PDM vault. Uh, there's a revision and version process, check-in, check-out. There's a flow uh, um, process that can be implemented as well to manage the uh, procedure for approval. And uh, on top of it, we can add a second layer of a management for a project management as well with the with the file uh, on a base on a file base uh, system with the PDM vault. So uh, it helps uh, quite a lot to manage your documentation. In the last uh, maybe two or you know three years, you might have heard of the 3D experience. The 3D experience is our cloud offering, and it allows you to connect uh, through uh, the cloud to get your latest, uh, you know, the best of SolidWorks, you know, X design, X shape, uh, X uh, or X application that are available on this platform. And what it allows you to do is basically connect anywhere, anytime, and access to your data on the cloud. And, and this is, you know, a great advantage, especially in these times now where most of us are at home. Uh, it helps you to uh, collaborate and communicate with your colleague. These lab, large files that are now used to be locally or on your local server now can be accessed on the cloud by anyone in your company. And you can work as a team, as always, with SOLIDWORKS or other tools available to you. So uh, the 3D experience is uh, something you might want to look in the future, if not now. The um, obviously the tools we offer SolidWorks very popular still more than 10,000 users here in the province you know worldwide past 4, 4 million I think so uh, the growth doesn't stop but we added more software like electrical like PCB designer uh, powered by X uh, by uh, Altium uh, draft site as well for uh, those of you that you know simply do some uh, you know DX, uh, DXF or DWG editing uh, draft site is uh, not free but uh, you know almost uh, for a few uh, hundred dollars you can access to a, a CAD editor um, for that matter so now the simulation is a big part of the CAD you know we like to uh, know a little bit more about our design by doing some analysis, some stress analysis, some flow analysis. All this can be done on your desktop with some solution or as well in the 3D experience with uh, some powerful tools there as well. So more than that, well, you know, we offer a complete solution from design to manufacturing and we have software to help you to get there. So SOLIDWORKS CAM, which will allow you to create your G-code within SOLIDWORKS with your own uh, CNC machinery. We have inspection report creation from the SOLIDWORKS draft, the draft or the model. We have uh, visualize that's going to help you render that 3D model on a photo level. And you, know, you have composer as well, it's going to help you create your um, documentation, anything from a manual instruction to an assembly line to a visualized video of uh, your product, your exploded view, or any type of documentation that you need. So um, it's all there to help you. And finally, the community, which brings me to SMAP 3D. Now, there is a big community in the, in the SolidWorks world and the VISO system. There's a lot of partners, and each of them, you know, brings something more to SolidWorks. You have to see as SolidWorks as a big toolbox, and these guys have a special tool in our toolbox that does specific things. So that's it for me. Let me introduce Michael Moore. Michael, it's all yours. Your time to shine. Thank you for stay for for watching our webinar. Stay tuned. If you have any questions, please please feel free to write them down in our, uh, our question uh, uh, section, and I'll uh, answer it. I'll, I'll either answer it or ask Michael to answer it live. Have a great day. Thank you, Michelle, for that uh, great introduction okay. there. Oh, just remind so, me, if you have any questions, yes. just feel free to ask. So we can type in our questions in the chat. Um, we can answer them as we're going along. If there's things that we need to follow up on, we will definitely do that. All right. And uh, just so you know, this is going to be recorded and, and shared with you guys if, uh, if you're not able to, to stay for the whole time or if you have any difficulties. So uh, a little bit of uh, a short introduction here to SMAP 3D and who we are. <clears throat> So um, my name is Michael Mooney. I'm the technical director for North and South America. 
I'm based in North Carolina. And um, SMAP 3D is not a new company. We've been around um, for a bit over 30 years now. Um, formerly known as CAD Partner. In 2019, we changed our name kind of like uh, the, the, the solid experts in the, the, the 3D experience uh, with SolidWorks. We were just trying to make things easier for everybody to, uh, to know who we are. Um, we are headquartered in Germany, but we have uh, facilities throughout the globe that allows us to do 24-5 tech support. Uh, we have over 1,800 customers worldwide, which is a small number in comparison to SolidWorks, but we're a very niche market um, focusing on the piping side of, of things with plant design. Uh, we come highly recommended by SolidWorks for piping applications, and we are a gold partner of SolidWorks. So what that means is single window integration into SolidWorks, um, always up on the current version with service packs and major releases, and also to, to ensure that we're a sustainable company, healthy business, uh, and gonna be around for many years to come. Most of our customers uh, exist in this kind of engineer to order or configure to order space, or they really would have a strong desire to get there. And this is something that we can help out with. Um, inherently with plant design, we're talking about large data sets, large assemblies, many parts, um, not only physically in space, how much room it takes up, but also how many components we're talking about. And a big push for many years now has been getting into this modular kind of uh, fabrication to where we can build things in the shop and have a more controlled environment and then put it on a truck or a, a rail car and ship it out to the job site and plug it all together. <clears throat> at the plant. Now there's three main pillars to SMAP 3D plant design, and that's the PNID, the 3D piping with inside of SolidWorks, and the single line isometric fabrication pipe drawings. Okay. There's more to it than that, but these are the main pillars that, uh, that people are usually focused on. And so we're going to drill down into each one of these and show you a little introductory demonstration today of how the software works. So with PNID, this is a standalone application. And um, for, for some of you guys that might have looked at SolidWorks Electrical, we have this same approach as SolidWorks Electrical did with the 2D schematic and then connecting that through uh, an intelligent schematic software, which is uh, SolidWorks Electrical 2D, and being able to connect to the 3D world. Okay, so uh, it is a database-driven program. It's intelligent. We're doing a lot more than just lines, arcs, and circles. Uh, we do provide you an extensive symbol library of over 700 standardized symbols um, that we provide you, as well as you can add your own, create your own symbols, or import them from another program. With the intelligence, we're also able to do um, different types of automations. So um, doing design checks to make sure that we didn't put the wrong size uh, valve into a pipeline or, or something of that nature. And then also one of the big advantages here is we can generate bills of materials and component lists and connection lists way before having to complete the 3D model in SolidWorks, we can get a good bill of materials to get our long lead items ordered earlier on in the process. Now, the 3D piping, this is the application, uh, and I guess I should step back here with the PNID. This does not require a license of SolidWorks. You can run this standalone with no other CAD tools on that person's computer. Now, for many of us, we have to wear many different hats these days. And so with the 3D piping, this is the module that is embedded inside of SolidWorks. So it does require at least a SolidWorks standard license. Um, and so for this, we have the to-do list, which connects over into the PNID. So we have vision of what's in the PNID from SolidWorks. We also work with pipe specifications, or some people call them pipe classes. Um, this is the way pipe 
um, pipe fitters, pipe designers really do things and they're giving us a spec. Um, so that's something that we're able to work with and really make the whole process flow much more efficient. We also support non-round pipes. So if we look down here at the third picture at the bottom, you see some HVAC ducting, some air ducts. Um, so air ducting, cable trays, these types of things. We don't care what the shape of the pipe is. We can create any shape pipe. Uh, we're generating native SolidWorks parts and assemblies. So what this means to you is all the great tools that you um, still that you have in SolidWorks are still available to you. So if you prefer to do like a SolidWorks drawing as opposed to the isometric drawing, um, sometimes those are easier to read for some people. Or simulation, flow simulation, uh, composer, SolidWorks PDM. We work with all of these tools. Okay, we're just an extension of SolidWorks now. And other automated um, functions such as putting in insulation, adding reducers, putting in weld gaps, T's, that type of thing um, is more of an afterthought. The software does that for you. Now, for those of you that need these single line isometric drawings, some people refer them to them as isogen drawings. Um, this is something that SolidWorks cannot create or you have to manually draw it by hand in SolidWorks drawings. Um, but we leverage the industry standard, uh, which is Isogen, for um, generating these types of drawings for you automatically. <clears throat> okay. So we can click a button, output these uh, pipe spools into Isogen, single line isometric drawings for the pipe fitters, if this is a requirement for you. We can also uh, output these to a SOLIDWORKS drawing, a DXF, a DWG, a PCF, an IDF file, many different formats that are available there for you. Now, our libraries, um, there's two libraries that come with the software. One is for the PNID symbol library, and there's uh, a, a bit over 700 symbols in that standard library, which cover the ISO, um, the ISA 5.1 and 5.5, which is more commonly used in North America, uh, and, and other standards as well. For the, uh, the, the 3D standard parts, um, my slide here, I got a little figure here that's a little outdated. This is about 325,000 parts now in our standard pipe fitting library. All right. um, you can also add your own custom components. So things like valves from your specific manufacturer or flow meters or pumps, uh, those types of things we don't provide um, in general because there's just so many different manufacturers for valves alone um, across the world. So we've added a, a, a wizard so that you can add your own custom um, fittings and supply your parts to the library, to your pipe specs, as if it came out of the box. Now, uh, a big push here in recent years has been to uh, reduce the number of fittings you're using and start bending pipe. Uh, with bending machines becoming more affordable now, it's actually less expensive to bend the pipe in many applications than it is to use fittings. It's not always possible, but if you're one of those people that, uh, that do bend pipe, we have a bending simulation tool to make sure that what you've designed in SolidWorks can actually be bent or uh, fabricated in the real world. So we're looking at uh, things like, does the pipe, when you bend it, is it going to collide with the machine or is it gonna hit the floor uh, on the ground? Uh, is it going to kink or split the pipe? Uh, these types of things, so it can give us some, some insight of whether or not we can actually manufacture that. And then uh, for most of our customers, SolidWorks Weldments does a good job for them. Some of our customers need more um, high-end or higher-end structural steel detailing tools, and so we also have SMAP3D Steel, which fits that bill and takes SolidWorks Weldments to another level with all of the uh, bolted connections, we're working in a real assembly environment, uh, automated creating stairs and hand railings, facades, uh, various different uh, roofing details, and uh, 
and also the capability to output to a uh, DSTV file. So being able to, to go directly to the CNC machine or any SOLIDWORKS models. It doesn't have to be created by our STEEL program. Okay, so that's the, uh, the STEEL to NC module here. Okay, and then for those that need to do a really high-end top-down uh, look at the overall process, your fabrication process, all the way down to how you get your raw stock into the shop, uh, every one of the, the stations that it might go around in the fabrication process and see if we can find any inefficiencies or how we could um, you know, recognize bottlenecks and make your fabrication process more efficient. And then finally, we have our, uh, our scan to CAD, which is we don't do any scanning, but if you do have a laser scanner or have um, you know, a service bureau do scanning for you, we can take that point cloud and pull it into SOLIDWORKS in a very efficient manner instead of dumping the entire point cloud onto SOLIDWORKS and in many cases watching it crash. Um, we can actually pull it into our processing tool, SMAP3D scan to CAD, and selectively tell it what's important to us and only pull those over as SOLIDWORKS features. We're not going to be dealing with any tessellated data or mesh files which inherently SOLIDWORKS is not really built to handle very well. And really no mechanical CAD tools are. So um, looking at these kind of things, we have the PNID. We also do have a 2D schematic tool available, um, but we don't do anything on the 3D for, for um, electrical. Okay. Um, that PNID process then can go and Port right over into SOLIDWORKS. We can use uh, SMAP3D Steel to build your, your skids or your, your buildings. Um, the SMAP3D piping to do the piping with inside of SOLIDWORKS to make sure everything's going to fit, getting our cut links and that kind of thing, bending simulation, the SMAP3D isometric for the fabrication drawings, and then we can get into some other fabrication side of things as far as for these. Uh, steel to NC, or doing a, a full-on pipe fabrication analysis. So we can plan everything with SOLIDWORKS uh, in the earlier stages and with PNID. We can generate all of the fabrication information uh, along with SOLIDWORKS and isometric and um, any of the other tools. Working inside of uh, you know a familiar PDM or PLM environment from SOLIDWORKS as well. Um, and then also there's there's capabilities to to actually integrate the the lists from P and IDs into your ERP systems and that type of thing. So um, with our services we provide for you guys, training, okay, always a, a great tool to be able to get up and running and be efficient quicker. Best practices with our experience of uh, of onboarding thousands of companies. Um, we can get into helping you go down the right path the first time, as well as project support. We have engineers on staff, as well as many of our customers are engineering firms that outsource their services if you do need help in a project and you have a tight timeline. Just an idea of training. Generally, our PNID classes are two days. The 3D piping for SOLIDWORKS is two days. The isometric training for um, the the isogen is uh, is is almost a day, and then the steel is two days. And then really, where we kind of fit is: do you design a product that has pipes connected to it, or do you do the plumbing and do all of the the routing of pipes for these types of of facilities that have a lot of uh, you know processes going on that we need uh, you know pipes involved so um, all gamuts that you can kind of really think of wastewater treatment facilities uh, power generation food and beverage is our biggest industry and then uh, another thing that people don't think about all the time is pharmaceuticals okay 
So all of these types of things, we work in all of these billion dollar uh, industries. And then some of our customers, Grunfuss, a very well known worldwide pump manufacturer that also does full um, fire suppression systems for high rise buildings. Um, Kaiser compressors, they, they do um, compressors, but of course the full on facilities for, uh, for shops and things as well. Um, Cronus, the world's largest bottling machine manufacturer. They say that one in every four bottles in the world was filled by a Cronus machine. And Techno Alpine, um, they're generating uh, the snow blowing machines for the ski resorts. Um, whenever mother nature is not providing the proper amount of snow to make our skiing weekends exciting. Casper Schultz is a thousand year old metal fabrication company that now specializes in kind of more of the high end brewing facilities for, for beer. And then Prime Metals um, is a, a former Siemens company that um, is more into the, the energy sector. Uh, Planeta here, last couple of uh, companies here with um, doing very, very large assemblies uh, averaging, uh, you know, at least 500 pipe runs uh, for each project, doing it all in SolidWorks with Snap 3D. And then the other side of the spectrum, we have IAF uh, in Austria. They are confined with very tight spaces to get their product and their process in uh, its packaging unit, whether it be a shipping container um, or, or whatever it might be. And so here they're, they're not so much focused on, you know, how big it is, but can I fit everything in the confined space that I'm working in? And some of our other customers here um, that we can get involved in here with more of uh, what come the, the North American side of things. Uh, and of course, our our great partner here at, uh, at Solid Experts. <clears throat> and so with that, um, we'll jump over into the more exciting part of things and see how the software actually works and what is our workflow. <clears throat> so um, here we are in SolidWorks. And being a gold partner, we have a couple of new tabs up here for the SMAP 3D piping and the PNID to-do list. <clears throat> and if you needed steel, that's another module there that, that's an option. Um, but I like to split my SOLIDWORKS feature tree in half over here so that I can have my piping tool or my piping tree on my uh, on the top and have my regular SOLIDWORKS feature manager tree on the bottom. Also over in the right hand side in the SOLIDWORKS task pane, we got a new tab here for the PNID to-do list. This to-do list is kind of like the shopping list whenever you make to go to the grocery store so you don't forget to buy things. Uh, this is the same thing for PNID. We want to make sure that what was put into the process and instrumentation diagram, the PNID, we want to make sure that we don't forget to put anything into SOLIDWORKS from there. All right. And so again, sometimes this is a different person that works in the PNID side of things that does than in and a different person that does the 3D layouts in SOLIDWORKS. And so that's why these two are, are different applications um, that can provide the focus for these different disciplines. Okay. Now, um, the other thing here is if we look at the PNID. So when we highlight something out of the to-do list, it highlights it in SOLIDWORKS. But if I come over here and I split my screen here, Kind of hard to show this on a on a webinar. If I had dual monitors, right, I could have one screen on or one application on each screen. But I'm just going to split it here. And whenever we kind of like take a look here, it's going to highlight in both applications, so we can see where does this one tool relate to another one, right? And so it really makes it easier to figure out how the two worlds relate to each other and, and come together. Okay. So looking back here, we can also see that we have uh, information down here about each one of these components coming from the PNID. So if I take a look here at this B2001, 
and jump over to the PNID, we'll see that that's highlighted here. And we see that same information that was inf input into the PNID travels on over into SOLIDWORKS for us. All right. Now, um, this kind of relates to what I was going to explain. What is an intelligent PNID program? Okay. Um, what that means is instead of just lines, arcs, and circles here, we have symbols that have a database component or an article number attached to it. Okay. And so I see this article number, I can go into the database and I can see all about this particular um, vessel. How many connections and what sizes does it have? Who makes it? Um, what's the description? How big is it? What's the flow capacity? Is there power requirements? And this is all customizable in this little form here, so you can customize it to meet your needs of what uh, information is important to your company. All right, now with all of this information here, this is how we're able to create bills and materials from the PNID. We don't have to wait until the 3D is done in SOLIDWORKS to get a, an accurate bomb. Now, your SOLIDWORKS bill of materials is going to be more accurate because in there we're able to calculate the cut lengths of pipe and how many elbows are needed, all of the more uh, specific details. But when we get into what's in a PNID, is more of the main equipment um, in finding out you know, some of these things might take months to receive once you place an order. And so the earlier on you can get these, the better off they are. The better off you are on getting your, your job done on time, right? So another type of, uh, of report that we can generate here is a component list. This is more popular in a process engineering environment uh, because it shows more detail. And instead of like a bill of materials, it's organized by a single line for each part number and then a quantity of how many, a component list is organized by a single line for each tag number or each instance and then giving all the details of what uh, process specific information we might want to share. And this is customizable as well. Now, all of these reports can be exported out to a, uh, an external file like uh, an Excel spreadsheet, a uh, CSV, a uh, text file, or an XML file. Okay. So we can easily export those out if you wish to do that. All right, now, how do we actually, um, well, before we actually start drawing things, there's another type of report here we, we call data sheets. And this is, again, customizable, where you can put what type of information is important to you based on a, a type of component. So for all my vessels, I want it to generate uh, a report here for each vessel and give me the information about what's in it, how much pressure, uh, how much volume I'm working with, and, and that type of thing. And then our last type of report here is going to be a, uh, a symbol legend. Okay. Now, I see a lot of times customers and prospects that uh, were, you know, maybe using a, a more traditional 2D CAD for their PNIDs, and they just have this, this blanket generic uh, symbol legend they put on every drawing that might have, you know, 30, 40, 50 symbols on there that, that are never used. Uh, our symbol legend is generated custom for each project, so it's only going to show you what symbols are used in that particular project, making it easier for the person reading this and receiving it to find the symbol that they're not familiar with, that maybe that's something unique that you've used or, or drawn on your own. Okay. Now, how do we draw things in PNID? I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to page number two here. Um, kind of similar to Microsoft Excel, we can click through here and see all of the other supporting documents that we can have in here, a cover sheet, a table of contents, different chapter dividers uh, to where we can organize things into maybe building one or building two or phase one and phase two of a process. Um, just some, some organizational skills. I'm going to come in and add a pump, and it's going to connect to this heat exchanger. Okay. 
And again, if I hover over that heat exchanger, I can see the, uh, the details about that. Now, um, generally people get information in two different ways for P9Ds. One is they're told ahead of time what components and what manufacturers and what part numbers are gonna be used for the pumps and for the valves and that kind of thing. And if that's the case, we can come in here and we can, uh, we can search directly for those components. Other times people are, they gotta do the engineering to figure out what size pump and what size motor do I need to operate this. So things might start off more conceptual where we just wanna put a, uh, a generic pump in here. We don't know who makes it or what kind it's gonna be, but we're just gonna place a pump in here and tell it that it's gonna be my uh, P2002, right? And so we're gonna ask the software, this map, has this tag number been used before in this project? So I'm gonna hit the question mark here to ask it the question, and it rolls up to 2004 because 2002 and three have already been used. All right, and so we can come in here and just tell it that, hey, that's all that I know right now. I'm going to put a pump in here and I'm going to, you know, connect it with a pipeline. And then later on, once you find out what that is, you can come back and tell it exactly what part number it is. Um, so I'm going to go back and, and we're going to say, well, let's look at the other concept of, hey, I know what part number I'm going to use for this pump. And I can come in here and maybe I want to search down in here for my different pumps that I might use. Uh, there's different types of pumps. Um, and this might prove that you have too many in there to really find. So one of the really nice things about working with databases is the capability of doing intelligent queries. Okay. So I can come down here and I can either search by a part number. Okay. Or I can say, hey, show me my pumps. Okay. So I got my pumps. Here I got three of them that are labeled as a pump. Or I might uh, you know, I might not even know that information. I might know who makes it. Maybe I'm looking for an apex pump, or um, maybe I want to look for one of our customers, Grunfus. Okay, uh, and so we can come in here and see that I got two pumps and a motor that's associated to those. And so I'll use this one that has a look, looks like a little bit smaller of a footprint than the second one, and it has all of the necessary information here. So I can go ahead and say, hey. Let's place this and it goes ahead and automatically grabs the correct symbol that's associated to that part number. So you don't even have to worry about what symbol is supposed to be used. And in this case, I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, oh, let's go with a P3000. And I'm going to tell it that this is not going to be a piece of inline equipment. It's going to be a piece of main equipment, which is going to indicate to the 3D user that you need to place this into the SOLIDWORKS assembly before you start running the pipe because pipe connects to it. And that's all that this checkbox really does. So it really helps us when we get over here as whether or not it gets a blue dot on it up in the top of the list, or does it not get a blue dot and it's just a regular inline component. All right, now there's other pieces of information that might be important here. So I know the pump that I'm going to use, but I have no idea what fluid medium is going to be going through here. So we can set up uh, drop down menus. Okay. We can also get in and, uh, and put in any specific um, information here. Like maybe I want this to be uh, 90 degrees and uh, it's designed to handle 95, but I want my max temperature to maybe be 110. <clears throat> And then the pressure, maybe it's designed for, uh, you know, it's going to operate at 10 bars, um, designed for 12, but it definitely cannot handle more than 16. All right. And these are also customizable. We can add and remove these as well. So just putting in some more process specific information about this particular pump. <clears throat> okay. But now that we have that in here, now I have, uh, you know, a more intelligent item here that I can now create a pipeline and connect them. So these little red diamond shapes are the connection points. I'm going to come in and uh, I have some pipes 
uh, different colors of pipe lines that I can draw in here. Uh, or if I wanted to get into doing some electrical lines or pneumatic lines, we got different line styles that we can use here. Uh, all different gamuts of uh, options there for your your piping. Now, this is where we really differentiate ourselves from traditional 2D CAD tools, is that we are built for schematics. So when we try to draw a pipeline out here that doesn't connect anything, the system's going to know that that's not normal. Normally, pipes connect to something, and it's just going to ask, did you really mean to not connect it to something? Did you want to park it out there in empty space? Or is this supposed to be a line link to another page? Okay. Um, and I'll show you a line link here in a moment, but this is where it kind of comes off to another page, right? Now, if I connect to this connection point, then it knows, okay, that's normal. I'll go ahead and just create a little line here for you. Now that we have that in here, we have our symbol. We can drag these around, make some more room. If it uh, intersects another pipeline, it'll automatically do a line break in there for me. And, uh, and so this is great where I can make room for things later on without having to redraw all my lines. Now, uh, before I forget, these line links, if we look here, we ran out of room on one page and had to continue on to this page number two. So we can double click on this and see where did that come from. And it puts our mouse cursor right on where that came from or where it goes to. Okay, so it really makes it easy because many times our customers might have hundreds of sheets in a PNID project. So trying to remember where all these lines go and connect to uh, can be challenging. <clears throat> all right, so we're going to come in. We need to give this a tag number, a unique identifier of this pipeline. So we'll say that this is going to be PL300. Okay. Um, if we can't remember what our naming scheme was going to be, we can set up these values just kind of like a little cheat sheet here to, to find out, hey, in our company, if it's cold water, hot water, or steam, here's the tag numbers that we generally use or start with, or you can generate your own. You can also get a list of what has been used in this current particular project. And I could say, oh, let me continue on with the 60 series and count up from there. So it's really up to you how you want to manage those. Also, with our line data fields, we can come in here and put in process specific information about this pipeline. It's going to be carrying HW for hot water. And if you wanted uh, to come in here again and, and put in some, uh, some temperatures, um, we could do that. It was 90, this was 95, right? 12 and 16 or whatever we want to put in there. And these are just things that can be written out to our, um, our reports later on as well. Now, if we notice here, the label that I've been given here is, uh, is one that is missing a little information. So I have the tag number, the PL62, and the medium, hot water, but I never told it what size or what pipe spec to use. So here, instead of going in and typing in all this information, I can pull this from my pipe specifications. Um, now, typically our customers have around uh, you know, 8 to 12 pipe specs. Uh, some of our customers have over 1,000 pipe specs that they use. Uh, it just really depends on you and your company as far as what you want to use here. So I'm going to go with this spec named spec 10 CA and 100 millimeters or a four inch piece of pipe. So now it knows what elbows, is it butt welded, is it threaded, is it uh, you know flanged, what type of pipe, is it schedule 10, is it schedule 40, is it uh, carbon steel, is it stainless steel? Is it PVC? All of that information is stored in your pipe spec. Now, the other thing about pipe specs is, is now it comes time to put a valve in here. Well, I can go to my component database over here, and I got a bunch of valves in here that I can choose from. But how do I know that I'm putting the right uh, kind of valve that can handle this pressure and temperature that I'm going to be dealing with? All right. And that's also where your pipe specs can be a big, um, a big helper. 
is we can right click and we can tell it to place from the specification. So in our pipe spec, we have four approved pieces of, of equipment for 100 millimeter spec 10CA pipe. Okay. So I'm gonna go with this globe valve here that does my, my needs just fine. And so now it knows the symbol. I don't have to worry about that. We can just place it right into the, into the diagram. We'll say that this is gonna be a V3000. Again, I can put in any process specific information in here that I wish. Uh, but kind of thinking about this more is, well, what are the specifications? What is the information about this valve? We don't make valves here. We, uh, we purchase them and put them in here. So we can come in and, and pull the information about this, and it'll open it up right here in a PDF uh, right from the manufacturer. Okay, so it's right there at the engineer's fingertips. We don't even have to do a web search. And so these are great tools here. And now that we have this in here, we can go in and uh, we can take a look here at all of our reports now. We have our P3000s in here, our pump, our motor. Um, various different components that we've added in. And we can share this with other people by exporting out to a PDF. Okay. Now we have different uh, you know, levels of information, whether or not it's gonna be an external facing document, maybe we wanna turn off, turn off any proprietary information, or if this is gonna be an internal facing document, we can turn everything on. Um, just controlling your IP. We can go ahead and update all of our lists. And now we have this entire 17 page PDF here. All right, that, um, that I'm just looking at in, in Adobe Reader is what I'm using, but uh, it's, it's not really specific. And uh, as far as what you wanna use, but it has all the information in there from the PNID, that intelligence. So I can come in here and say, well, what is that? Oh, that's a diaphragm valve and it's got pure steam. Uh, where does this pipeline continue on to? Oh, okay, it continues on right here. Um, so these are great tools and uh, it doesn't require the, the recipient to have any special software or, or licensing of anything to, to read these things, okay? Also find, hey, where's my P3000? Boom, okay, there it is right there. Um, so that's a great collaboration tool as well. And we can, of course, also export out to a DWG and a DXF. Okay, the problem there is you gotta have a, a, a piece of software to read that and it's not secure. People can change your design. Whereas a PDF is much more secure. So how does all this information get back over into SolidWorks for the 3D side of things? Okay, so we'll just, Jump over here and we'll tell it, this is a semi-automatic update. We're gonna hit refresh the PNID project. And it rereads everything down here and compares to what's in um, the PNID as compared to what's in the, the 3D model here. Okay, so let me just close this down here. We'll just start this up again here. I think I uh, clicked something earlier while we were getting started up. And we'll go ahead and get this fired up again here. There we go. So we'll start our piping. And then whenever we have a PNID associated to a SolidWorks assembly, it will automatically update it whenever we open the to-do list here. And now we get our uh, reports here of these orange components that they do not exist in SolidWorks yet. And then down here, I have this PL62 that has these other components in it as well. Okay. So I need to place my blue dot components first okay, because pipes connect to that and it's gonna be really hard to connect pipes to it if it doesn't exist in SolidWorks yet. So I can right click on this and from the, the PNID database, it knows already what 3D model is supposed to be used by that part number. So we don't even have to look for that. 
it checks that off green. Now we're happy. And uh, then we can move on to the next stage. We got all of our blue dot components. I'm going to switch over here to pipelines. And I'm just going to tell it that I want to create a new route. Now it's going to ask me here, this new route that you're creating, do you want us to create a new subassembly for you? Yeah, absolutely. Help me make my SOLIDWORKS assembly tree more organized. Um, because we all, or, or I know that I'm not very organized. So any organizational tools will really be a big help for that. And at this point, we can just come in and we can tell it, oh, OK, well, where am I supposed to be connecting this? There's a lot of different nozzles that could be used here. So I'm going to tell me to, I'm going to ask the system here to show me the, uh, the from two points. OK, and I went a little fast there. Let me get out of this here real quick. We'll go back to the top level and. Uh, and here I can show the from two points. We can't show them when we're inside of a sketch, but it goes in and puts a red balloon or red dot on the nozzles that are supposed to be used by this PL62. Okay. So now I know where I'm going. I can hide those and we can go back in here again and we can sell it that we're going to create a, um, actually let me go back into this. Yeah, we'll edit this assembly. And then we can come back in here and create a route. All right. So with this being uh, created here, now I can come out here and I can do an auto route or a manual route. This one's pretty simple. So I can just take advantage of the, uh, the auto route here. And we can go from this nozzle here to the nozzle down here on the pump and I have limited capabilities here. I can make it closer to the pump, closer to the heat exchanger, or I can tell it to go down first. Uh, but if I need more control than that, then I'm going to need to use the manual route, which is really just a 3D sketch in SOLIDWORKS. So if you're familiar with 3D sketching in SOLIDWORKS, um, that's going to be a familiar environment for you. Now, when I say OK, it inputs, imports the data from PNID so it knows what size and uh, in all the different types of fittings. And now our piping engine kicks off and builds the 3D assembly for you. Okay. And when we started here, the only thing that was in this assembly was this piping sketch, okay, piping one. Okay. Everything else was just inserted and built and mated by SMAP 3D piping. Okay. Didn't require any. Um, any operations by the user. All right. And so this is how pipe specs can be very efficient. It knows here that I need to use a welding neck flange instead of a slip on flange. It knows that I want a three millimeter weld gap in between uh, all of my pipes here, all of my fittings. So those are inserted. And it knows that I need a 1.5 millimeter PTFE gasket to be placed in there as well. So with all of that being taken into account, we're able to create extremely accurate cut links in our bills and materials. All right, we still got a big warning flag up here. We have not placed our valve yet. Now in our PNID, we put the valve on the nozzle, but now looking at that, that's not going to be the safest location for that. So we can put this valve anywhere along the pipeline that we want to. So we can place the model into CAD. And again, since we placed it from the pipe spec, it knows what 3D model is supposed to be used with that. And we can even come in here and make a little smart mate here in SOLIDWORKS. We can, uh, we can also tell it that we want uh, this, maybe this top face here to be uh, <laughs> a certain distance off the floor here. Maybe we'll go 1.5 meters. And then we can just use SOLIDWORKS mates as well. To, uh, to define the clock position of the valve so that everything is in the right orientation and location. So now that's all checked off. Everything is good. And um, from here, all we need to do is I still need to update this piece of pipe. Okay. So I can do that just by right-clicking and recalculating, which is kind of 
uh, the piping version of rebuild uh, for snap. And it's going to realize that, hey, there's a new component in here. We need to cut that piece of pipe. And we need a flange and a gasket on each side of that valve. Okay. And our pipe specs can also carry the, uh, the material information as well. Okay. And so now we have our completed pipeline here. Um, now it comes time for, for fabrication drawings. So we can easily use SOLIDWORKS drawings if we wish, or if you need that single line isometric drawing, the isogen drawing, we can hit two buttons, start ISO and then hit finish. And then it's gonna come out here and it's going to convert this 3D model into this single line isometric. And it doesn't matter who with inside of your company generates these, they're gonna look the same standardized look and feel for everybody and have a, a nice uniform standardization for your company because we're using these templates in here that we have. And you can set up as many of them as you'd like. I'm just gonna do the, the final cut list here. So it's a final drawing with a, a cut list in it. And so, yeah, there in about uh, 15, 20 seconds, we generated a drawing here. If I would have done this from the top level assembly, it would have generated about 64 drawings and would have taken uh, almost four minutes, okay? But, um, I'm fine if it takes four minutes and I don't have to do anything. And then I got 64, 65 drawings done. Um, and so we have it broken out here with the elevation call outs, the northing and easting directions, um, the dimensions all put in here. It even pulled in the tag number from PNID all the way through SOLIDWORKS out into the isometric drawing. Okay. Uh, if I look at my bill of materials over here, I have, uh, I know I need a 100 millimeter pipe. I need 3.8 linear meters. My other components for fabrication purposes. And then when it it's time to install this into the field, I have my erection list. And um, we got our gaskets and we got our washers and uh, bolts and nuts already added in here too. Even though we did not add that to the SOLIDWORKS assembly, SMAP 3D is intelligent enough to know that I'm going to need 64 washers and 32 nuts and bolts to put this particular pipe spool together. And then if I get down here to my cutting list, I know that, okay, here's my size. Here's the length of each piece of pipe in the end preparations based on the types of connections. Is it butt welded? Is it threaded? Is it grooved? Is it, um, you know, flanged? What are we working with here? So all of this can be written out here for you and generated in a nice big package. Um, and if we were to come in here and, and look at this, this ISO here, yeah, if we were to have run this um, on the top level, then we have all of these individual pipe spools inside of here and different styles of drawings that we can create as well. Okay. And so here's a, a slightly different style here that also has a weld box in it. And so that's really our process going from PNID to piping and SOLIDWORKS to creating the, the, the single line isometric fabrication drawings for the pipe fitters. Now with that, I'm going to open up and see if we have any questions or if Michelle has anything that I've forgotten. Um, I know we're right up against the hour of our allotted time, but um, yeah, any any questions that we can help field? Okay. Very good. All right. Appreciate the feedback here. I don't really see any specific questions. All right, um, Michelle, you have any anything you want to add? Hello. All right. Um, Can you hear me? Sorry, go ahead. 
uh, looks good when you do it, but you've been doing for a while. About how training, how how long does one for and, and to use it? Uh... So yeah, with training, um, with a with a new company coming online, it it realistically takes about a month to get everything set up. So we have about a week of training, depending on what modules. You know, two days for PID, two days for piping, one day for isometric. Um, but then the big portion of it, the, the most labor intensive part is setting up your pipe specifications because they're different for every company. Um, there are some generic things that we can do, but it still requires some massaging and some customization to do it the way that your company does, the way your process has to be. So that realistically takes about a month to really get up and running um, at full speed. So that's a, that's a great question there. And um, Another question, uh, Michael. Yes. Thank you. Not sure if. I, what about the. Can you repeat the question? I heard what about, and then I, I broke up. Victolic connection? Oh, Victolic, yeah. So we have a, a library of Victolic. We don't have every single style that they have under the, the, the umbrella but we do have uh, a library that includes some standard Victolic uh, fittings here. So if we come up here and uh, I'll just start my pipes part finder here. <clears throat> so our part finder is our library of fittings that we provide, all right? And so we have some things with inside of here of getting into the uh, the AGS and the OGS is, is kind of the, the two basic ones that we do out of the book. Um, but the nice thing about Victolic is they have their library of, of things to download in SolidWorks format. Um, and we can use our wizard here. We have a component wizard to add things that might not be in the library already, um, where you can add it to it really quickly and easily and, uh, and put anything that you want in there. Okay. Um, just looking through a few of the other questions here. Couplings can be added automatically, Sebastian. Uh, again, it depends on how you build your pipe spec as whether or not you want that to happen or do you want to have the control over it yourself. Okay. Um, so couplings, yes. Uh, Victolic, and then also, uh, I'm not really sure about this question from Sebastian. SolidWorks routing is doing well, but something about joining elbow to elbow. Um, so it, it's it's something that we can do inside of here. Um, this is not a great example showing it down here, but if this sketch would be able to move because of the way it's constrained right now, it wouldn't work. But uh, we can actually come in here. We have a, a function that's called um, remove pipe, which would then move that elbow onto the other elbow uh, or a elbow onto a flange or, or anything of that nature. Okay. Um, one place that it probably would work really well would be right here if we wanted to just remove this whole section of pipe right here. Yeah, we can come in there and, and do those types of things. Yeah, again, just depending on how your, your sketch is defined, I got a setting in there turned off that um, is is forcing me to use the SolidWorks sketch environment. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different tools inside of here to, to address those types of needs as well. All right, um, I don't see any other questions coming in now. Good questions though. Um, if there's any other things that you guys think about that you uh, you think afterwards, uh, what about placing? Okay. So insulation is also done automatically. Um, in our pipe specification, we can come in and, um, and specify what we want our insulation to be. And then once we get in here, we just say that we want to generate insulation. 
We can say along the entire length of the pipe, or we can control each segment um, along the pipe as we wish. And then, yeah, insulation will be put on there. And in the pipe specification, you can tick what will get insulation and what will not. So notice that it automatically did not put insulation over my valve. Okay, it's because we told it not to insulate that. And if it did insulate it, it's not going to do vacuum formed insulation over the shape of this valve. It's just going to do a piece of pipe over the top of it. So, yeah, insulation does work. And you can have multiple kinds of insulation because sometimes you have insulation for protection purposes so that people don't bump into it and get burned. Or other times it's for thermal purposes to make sure that the fluid inside it stays a, a controlled temperature. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Michelle, for hosting. And uh, if you guys have any questions after the fact, yeah, please contact your, your solid expert uh, representative.